Hi, Global Minecraft Education Edition community. We are live here in Redmond, Washington. Uh, my name is Vinu Rami. I'm a manager on the Education Edition team, and I work on training and community. And my name is Brian Bonham. I am also a program manager on the Learning Programs team in Minecraft Education Edition, uh, and we're pleased to be here for our November live stream. Uh, and we're not alone. We have uh, John Miller joining us. John, are you still in California? Uh, I am, yeah, southern yeah. Uh, Monterey County. John is joining us from California, but he is also the recent recipient of a fellowship that takes them to Singapore to look at education systems in Singapore and specifically game-based learning. So John is a longtime uh, community member and uh, we're really excited to talk with him about some of the content that he has created uh, for us. John, do you want to say a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm a, a middle school teacher and I've been a middle school teacher for almost 25 years now. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm teaching uh, history. I teach seventh grade history, which here in California is world history. But I have uh, single subject and multiple subject credentials. So I've taught um, every subject in six, seven, and eight. And so I have a lot of experience uh, with uh, students at every content and grade level need and uh, right, right across the, the spectrum of kids. And experiences, uh, and I've I've been using games and Minecraft for about uh, seven eight years now in my class, and I've uh, really enjoyed it. So, John, you and I were actually recently at the Intentional Play Summit, and one of the things that struck me about what you shared about your use of Minecraft is how you think about the role of students in the learning process when they're using Minecraft. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you think about when using Minecraft or even why do you, why do you consider Minecraft uh, a part of your toolbox as an educator and what impact have you seen on students when you've used it with them? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, what Minecraft does, I, I tried to, uh, when, I, when I first started, I try to develop lessons that were like a regular lesson that I would normally do in my class and follow the, the structured lesson plan model. Uh, and I quickly found out that as soon as the kids were in the game, they were uh, uh, totally immersed in it. And if if I had forgotten something to add something, I, I couldn't anticipate everything that the kids were doing and how they were reacting. So it, uh, I quickly abandoned that kind of a model and I changed my mindset so that I, I then designed lessons and sort of built worlds based on kids exploring them rather than uh, doing something a little more linear. Uh, uh, early on, yeah, sure, if it's just a one day thing, but I, I, want my, I want to put my content in the world and then the kids to explore it kind of at their own pace uh, and, and then come across uh, interesting tidbits to, to in history, because I teach history, to, to add to a, a story that they're going to create. And I like to have the kids kind of put it together. We're always trying to get up to that DOK three and four level here. And it's so difficult to do, but Minecraft has is, is a great tool where kids can dive so deep, uh, deeper than really I could even anticipate. And it lets them follow the flow of a, a story that they're developing and they're the characters in the story. Uh, and then when we come out of the game, their mind is so full of information. Uh, it's, it's hard to harness that. So they, they love to, to write and, and tell me what happened in the world, who they met. Um, they put things together in, in logical order and sequencing. Um, they're, they're comparing what they see in one city or village with the, the next uh, that they're going to interact with. Uh, they're, they're reading stories about what happened before they went into the Minecraft world. That gives them some background. And then when they get in there, they see different things so they can uh, see different sides and points of view. So it is really 
changed the way I teach and has given uh, given me an, an awareness of, of, of student needs, real student needs, and then that is we got to let them play. Uh, and then while they're playing, uh, they're, they're learning so deeply. It's uh, really astonishing. Awesome. Thanks, Jan. Um, so you're here for a special reason. There's something exciting happening in the world of Minecraft today. There is. Brian, do you want to <laughs> give away the big, big surprise sure. that people haven't checked their Twitter because new, they've been they've been teaching? Yes, the new coding update is out for Minecraft Education Edition that you can get today. Uh, so if you go to our website, uh, education.minecraft.net, uh, and go to the download section on there, or if you're an auto debt update, it may just do it for you. Uh, but one of the cool things about the new update is that now, instead of downloading Code Connection uh, to get the, the agent and be able to code in the game, you can just hit C, and it just does it for you. The agent will appear magically in front of you. You can pick your, your coding platform, your coding editor, and you're, you're off. It's kind of exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. So, it's so much easier than what it used to be. So one of the things that we asked John to do to support the use of coding is we did not uh, want to isolate coding from the rest of the school day. And John is one of those educators who finds a way to bring coding almost in every subject area that, that he touches on with his students. So we turned to John and said, can you help us create a set of lesson plans that incorporate coding in, in other subject areas? So you could be teaching coding and um, engineering, coding and math. And John has just done that very exact thing for us. And those lessons, uh, Brian is kind enough to show off yeah. on, our, on our site and they're there. And I think uh, since Brian, you oversee content. I think you, you want to take us through a couple of them and have John comment on them, maybe? Yeah, sure. Uh, so to get to these, so what you can do, if you go to uh, our website, to find these, you can go to Class Resources and Find a Lesson. I'm going to take you through it on the website here. There we go. And you'll hit our Subject Kit page. So we do have lessons um, for all different subject areas. So right now under CS, so computer science, uh, right at the top of the page here, and I already have this one loaded up over here, uh, you'll see code to learn STEM. Uh, so we have all the different lessons that are, that are here. Um, for example, we have 3D fractions. What do you think, John? Is that a good one? They're all good, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. All right, we have that one up on the screen now. Uh, when I actually, when you have a question, you look different without the hat, for sure. If anybody's <laughs> seen your picture, your mentor picture on, on the site. Yeah. Um, so one of the ideas was this is that, you know, is teaching coding without, I don't know, I want to say without teaching coding, without having a separate part of your day be coding. Could you speak to that a little bit? Right. Yeah. It's um, what I try to do is if combined kind of STEM lessons because uh, I have a background in physical science too. And I thought there's so many great lessons out there and ideas that, that, that inspired me. I thought, why, why couldn't we combine uh, a, a mathematics lesson with uh, a bit of coding? So the kids are learning how to, in this case, how to make fractions, but use their agent to help make fractions in three dimensions, help uh, putting fractions on a number line. Uh, and these are all things that we see on our, uh, on our state and now national assessments as well. So it, I thought, I, I, it's kids kind of struggle with that. At least my students do when they when they have to take those exams because it, it it's really requiring them to think three dimensionally. Uh, and so Minecraft is the the perfect tool to let the kids get their hands on blocks and uh, make their, uh, in this case, fraction models. Awesome. Uh, so the all the files that you need, uh, as well as the lesson plan, are up on the site. So for example, there's a world file download, which I got, just got here. Um, so it's a little zipped MC world file. Uh, so you can click on that, and you'll be all set. It'll load up in the game. Um, Anything you want educators to know, John, who go to use these lessons from our site? Yeah, it's there. 
they're not kind of like there's no real tutorial in this so the idea is that teachers and their students should have some experience at least with um, the, the coding in the game uh, and maybe they've used their agents to move around and, and maybe place some blocks because uh, that, that's sort of a prerequisite to be able to do these uh, and to be successful. I, I try to write them so that they could be done in a, a class period, an activity session. Uh, some might spill over. They could teachers could break it into two or three different components, and I try to account for all levels of of students and students that need some uh, differentiation. You might find some students that are that have really. Uh, lots of experience with this and can move through this quickly so i try to put some extra challenges in them in there for them students can pair up on many of these and there are a few that are even i think good for a, a small group of two or three especially like uh, there's some that are more data collection uh, that you're you would be sharing with the whole class uh, as kids are all uh, performing their own scientific experiments in the game well, we can't wait to see what educators sure. do to adapt these uh, for their classroom. Um, if you're watching this, um, let us know what you think of these lessons. If you try one, I'm sure John would like to hear feedback on um, how that's gone. John's actually done the work of garnering some educator feedback before we finalize these. So it's been a real partnership. And John, it's been really great uh, working with you on this we have some additional coding resources we sure uh, that we want to highlight um if you want to share those yeah absolutely so you can find these at education.minecraft.net slash cs for computer science uh so you could uh, you can download the coding update of the game uh we have our new uh, exciting hour of code is out now is this the third or fourth one that we have this is the fourth one the fourth one and in uh, past three years, we've had over 100 million sessions. Say that again, Minu. How 100, many sessions? 100 million sessions. 100 million. It's like, wow, that's a lot of sessions. Okay, this one is themed around Update Aquatic. Yep. So you will go underwater as part of this one, which is which is kind of a new thing for Minecraft. So you could do this hour of code. You could go back and check out the, uh, the past three that we have. Uh, and then we also, of course, have... Some learn to code resources. So if you want to learn how to do this, so John was saying that uh, you know having a little bit of background knowledge for you and your students would probably be a good thing. So we have several MEC courses that are up now as well. So that's the Minecraft Education Community courses. Yes. Yeah, so if you go to education.microsoft.com and and log in and you specifically look for why either the product or the topic Minecraft you should come upon this landing page. Um, the My Minecraft Journey covers uh, coding. Uh, the, uh, some of the other additional uh, courses that we added include the Building Blocks of Code 1 and 2. We've updated the Redstone course as well. So if you haven't been to the Microsoft Educator community in a while and looked at the Minecraft specific courses, We've added a number of them um, for the coding update, and then we're constantly looking to update these. Again, if you have used them and have feedback on them, um, please write to us uh, via our support site. It's always good to hear what's working for you, what's not working for you. Anything else they should they should know about? What else should they be thinking about? What else should we be thinking about? One of the other fun things. So this is the, uh, the updated version of the game. So we're oh, now yeah. at 1.7. Uh, so you'll see a couple things. So you can go, there's an educator resources button, the one with a little apple on it. So if you click through that, uh, it will take you to the My Minecraft Journey course on Mech, as well as to the lessons uh, that you can download and the worlds. And then we have a new thing as well, the library. So the library is an exciting new feature in uh, Education Edition. So this is a library of worlds right now. So you can go and a lot of uh, a lot of the worlds that we have in here. So it says beta. So we're still working on the, the worlds that are in here. We want to get some more stuff. But right now we have a lot of great templates that are in there. Uh, the uh, favorite blocks of grass is here. A nice simple world. Our chemistry tutorial. If you want to learn a little bit more about Code Builder, you can go and check that out. But like I said, and now it is easier than ever. So all you're going to do is hit C to code. Um, 
We have our most recent Imaginormous Challenge when our world is in here. If you are playing on iPad, we do have an iPad specific tutorial uh, in the library now as well that can help you get started. Uh, our starter town, Oregon Trail, is back as well, and we have the Voyage Aquatic, uh, which has a number of great uh, coding resources available with this one as well. So definitely, if you've not updated yet, check it out and, and check out the new functionality that we have in there. The one specific call to action that we have is we have an Hour of Code facilitator course on the Microsoft Educator community. Uh, we invite everyone who's watching to obviously lead an hour of code with their own students, but also share the facilitator uh, course with other educators so that they can lead their own hours of code. Um, we can't wait to see how many more millions of sessions we can potentially get uh, this year, but really our, our desire is that we empower you to empower your students to understand at least the basics of coding. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No. I think it's that's awesome a lot. Having John, though. Thanks so much for being on the call today. I appreciate it. Yeah, it is a lot already, right? Yeah. So um, you can find John on our site. Uh, sure can. He, as a global Minecraft mentor, he's on our site. You can also find us uh, both on Twitter. Please reach out. Let us know what you think about this live stream and what else you would like to see covered in the future live streams. If you would like to see more of John's lessons, you can go to his profile on the site. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, you can see all of the coding lessons that he's recently done, as well as the other worlds and lessons that he has created in the past. We'll just go to see all. So if you'd like to explore more on the site, in addition to doing the Hour of Code with your students. Thank you, John, for being here. We really appreciate all your contributions to the community, as always. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>